Okay, Rashad. Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? Um, so I, I haven't reacted to any of the uh, USA games. Salute to Team USA getting it done. Salute to Asia Wilson coming off the bench. 20 points, I believe she had eight rebounds as well. Full stat sheet. A couple days fresh off the celebration. Um, salute to Chelsea Gray also doing good things. And I believe KP is also on that team over there in Australia. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So salute to them. My name is Rashad Milligan. If you are new to the channel, this is the World Podcast. That's the reason why you all are here today. You read the title. You see what's going on. Miss Kim Mulkey, uh, salute to Corey Diaz. First things first, let me uh, start sharing my screen here. Salute to Corey Diaz. Shout out to the advertiser. Uh, support local journalism. Uh, shout out to the USA Network, Gannett, all those guys over there. He asked um, Kim Mulkey the question. He wanted her to comment about Brittany Griner, and she declined to do so. I'm going to share this again so I can have a shared sound with you all so you all can hear the exchange here. Uh, where are we? I'm going to go. I'm going to go on this one. Okay, so scroll up. And shout out to Phil Lewis, that another group one of my houses. dogs. All right, here we go. I don't know why I said dogs like that. <laughs> All right, here we go. And how would you describe that process of, of putting that collective group together? And then, too, I just wanted to get your thoughts on on Brittany Griner's situation. And uh, I don't think I've seen anything from you on that. And just can you, and you won't. That? I'll answer the first one for you. And how would you describe that process? So you see it there. Um, a quick dismissal. Um, if you kind of see Kim Mulkey, like I, I don't know Kim Mulkey at all. I've never spoke to her. I've never been in a Kim Mulkey press conference. So let's get that out the way first. Um, but if you see a lot of the things uh, that she does and says, like I, I think of the LSU press conference off top, her introductory press conference where she was like, let me take this staying mask off. That was kind of like in the middle of like the pandemic when, um, you know, before I think it was pre-vaccines, you know, so like mask mandates were still a very strict thing. Um, excuse me for the STR, I got to <laughs> trying to get it right. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, that's kind of like the first thing I think of. And I always think of her like, you know, kind of being passionate on the sidelines, throwing the jacket and, you know, uh, getting the technical stumping and, and crying and uh, the ruining the makeup and willing the team to victory through her passion on the sidelines. Um, Kim Mulkey's a lot, man. It's, there's a lot that comes with Kim Mulkey. Also, you have to shout her out for all that she's done for the game. Um, you're, you're talking about someone who, you know, multiple championships, uh, one of the best coaches in the in the history of the game. So salute to her for that. Uh, man, this is just, this goes beyond, you know, the game. Yeah, what is the game? There's going to be a lot of philosophical kind of viewpoints like I, I might take from here, or many philosophical. I don't want to say philosophical and all that stuff, and it's just surface level stuff. So the first one is like like what is important in life, right? When when dealing with other people, when um, communicating, when existing with other beings, right? Like what is the serious thing? I feel like when you employ someone for a job it goes beyond you're hiring someone to complete a job. It's something that, you know, you're, you're working with a person and, you know, you want to make sure that the things that that person does is true and they move with a certain type of morals or it depends on what you value in life. But I know a lot of people, you know, and a heavy part of college recruitment is based on personal relationships, interpersonal relationships, and, you know, just, people skills like that's how you recruit well that's how you get the top recruits you know of course money and stuff like that <laughs> you know like with saving getting like everybody hellcats and, and apartments and all that and everything like that and gated communities for their families if you're too a talk about it. but uh you know it's relationships it's like i trust this coach I, I really like the coach they sold me they didn't tell me any lies they kept it straight with me or they said, hey, you know, you can change your life here. This puts you in the best position to be a pro, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, yeah, man. It's it's just a lot, bro. It's a lot. Like, what do you, like, is it just the game that you're focusing on? Is it just business for you to get here to help you get to the next level and make some more money on a professional level for as long as you possibly can as an adult after college? Is that your goal? 
or is your goal to be valued by someone and to build a genuine mentorship and connection with someone? If you go back to the Destiny Henderson interview, um, Henny's talking about, I asked her about her relationship with Don. And, you know, um, if you look at Asia, once she just won the championship, you know, people asked her about Don and she's talked about how she still stays in contact with Don. Uh, Destiny Henderson was talking about how she was a mentor. She serves as a mentor to young black women. And, um, you know, she she's very vocal about what she stands up for. You know, she's seen, she's tweeted constantly throughout this entire time that Brittany Griner has been locked up. Uh, to free BG and do something president, do something vice president about this and help, let's help expedite the pro uh, process. She's been extremely vocal about it the entire time. So all of this is, I don't even know if I have the background for it. I, if, I, if I gave the background for it, if you're unsure what exactly is going on, Kim Mulkey was the former coach at Baylor. Uh, and yeah, the, the main player that kind of kicked off everything for her um, the champ, <clears throat> excuse me, in the championships and stuff was essentially Brittany Griner. Um, she was, she's a player that's changed the game, one of the most dominant players ever uh, in the sport, which you all know. Um, but, you know, I mean, you might not know, I don't know. It, you know, she kind of came in Duncan. She was like this viral Duncan sensation before viral was even like a normal thing. She was just on the local newscast in Texas, like dunking the ball with ease. It's like, look at this girl in high school that can dunk easily and two hand and a windmill and it was like this who is this kid you know Brittany Griner and you know Brittany shows up to Baylor and she lives up to all the hype and puts Baylor on that pedestal you know shout us out to um uh, the point guard with Connecticut the uh, these Odyssey Sims excuse me I ran blank on the name uh Odyssey Sims uh salute to you know that entire team and everybody over there and stuff like that so um yeah, BG did all that for Kim Mulkey in her career and boosting her to a certain status. And the entire time, Kim Mulkey's just been quiet. Uh, Kim Mulkey's kind of political views have hinted towards leaning a certain way, uh, which might have something to do with this. But I think it is kind of interesting that, you know, you don't even say one thing. Like, and that's the other philosophical point of it is... Um, does anybody owe you anything? Does a coach owe you loyalty for life outside of basketball, regardless of what you do, regardless of what they believe in? You know, I think, you know, to a lot of people, the general moral consensus will be, of course, like, that's not even a question. Like, why? But I think the reality of it is, like, everybody doesn't think like that. Um, you know, as, as sad and, and as selfish, as as rude, as mean as that might sound, everybody doesn't think like that of, you know, they, they, they should have your back, they should have your loyalty, they should have your respect for the rest of your life outside of this office, outside of this basketball court, this thing where we do business. And you helped me get millions with this new job at LSU. Um, I always think that's just a weird thing, but but, like, but it, it exists and it is what it is. Um, yeah, yeah, but but man, okay, cool. I'm sorry, I got it. I got it. Good news there. <laughs> but um, man, yeah, yeah. Anyways, let, let's go to some of the reaction here. Lexi Gordon, no, seriously, y'all, your coach needs to be someone you can keep in your life and supporting you keep in. Keep that in mind. Uh, as Queen Egbu said it, her former her former uh, player herself at Baylor before uh, Kim just left. I'm sorry, it's late, y'all. It's late. I apologize for the uh, murky words and stuff. Um, but here it is right here. A player that built Baylor two national titles, 40 and 0 record, yet her former coach refuses to say anything or simply just show some time of kind of support. Keep that in mind when choosing your schools. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty much the essential thing here. And Lexi Gordon is here uh, just agreeing with her. And um, let me see if I could see any other things here. Shakira Austin, who's currently with the USA team in Australia down under. Uh, it's all a business, shaking my head. Once you no longer benefit their lives, watch how they move after. Recruits, I don't know what else to suggest besides go overseas and be selfish. 
Um, I thought this was very interesting from Secure Austin because um, when she went to Maryland, it was a huge thing of like, you know, when she left Maryland, went to the transfer portal, it was a huge thing of her talking about her mental health and her well-being and she needed a fresh start and it just wasn't the best environment for her. It became toxic and she was like recruits, you know, just keep in mind like these college coaches are going to tell you anything to get in there. And then like it was like she went to Ole Miss, she got the shine she wanted. Um, she got the peace and joy. She, uh, I assume she she wanted, she desired, and got drafted high. Got drafted into a good situation in Washington, and now she's with Team USA. So I mean, I thought everything was cookies and cream after she transferred to Ole Miss, but seeing this when she said recruits go overseas and be selfish, I, I thought that was kind of thought that was kind of interesting coming from Kira. I wonder if there's any uh, comments to ask her about Coach O. Let me see. Or go play for Don Staley. Don't play for overseas. Overseas don't mean Russia. She's just a traitor. Heartless bullseye and monkey we trust. Never click on these, but I'm gonna click anyway. <laughs> don't know what you folks are so upset about. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so someone was like, "Is sympathy too much to ask for for someone you don't know personally?" See, this is the thing. It's like, I think. We like like it. I think everybody like a lot of people live by a certain moral compass of like you should do this if you know this right. You should, you know what I'm saying. Um, but I don't know. I think it's just a. I think it's just a weird thing. I want to ask. Uh, I was trying to get up a, a former college athlete up tonight, but they were like, "Dog, it's eleven. <laughs> like you got to let me know like a day ahead or something like that." But I knew I just had to uh, record tonight. I just knew I had to record tonight. So uh, I'm trying to click on, I'm trying to go down, uh, scroll down and stuff. And it's not selfish to advocate for yourself and what doing what's right for you. That's not selfish. Remember, you are a human. Athletes are human first. Um, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place, man. But yeah, I was trying to get a former athlete and just ask him kind of straight up because, I mean, I think, you know, of course, naturally, like all of us think like, yes, like, of course, like this person owes you loyalty at the at, at the very least, you got a money, you know, you you worked here like like I gave you this, I gave you this. I put blood, sweat and tears. I went through injuries. I played through hurt. I played hurt. I played. I did all of this for you. And in turn, you know, when I'm down bad, you can't even give me like a we're praying for you. You can't even give me a free. You, you can't even give me the slightest a bit of support, which just makes sense. But. And life. Like you, you learn, like, it's like, if you get burned, like it's all part of it. Like it's all like some, everybody doesn't live by that code. It is, it's a hard and a harsh, cold reality. That just is what it is. And I think this is a very, um, just kind of real world example. Now, what I am interested in, you know, um, are the, the athletes like the Flages, like the Angel Reese's, um, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that are still there over there at LSU now. Um, like, what do you do? <laughs> like, as a Black athlete, when you see this, like, what do you do knowing this? Because, yes, it's easy for me <clears throat> a few years down the line to look back on it and be like, yeah, my, not everything in life is fair, and nobody necessarily owes you anything at the end of the day, which I think is just kind of a concept you have to, like, live and, like, be you know I think you have to go through a certain thing to kind of come to that realization but like to 18 to 22 year old and some someone mentioned this on Twitter salute to them uh like you know they can't grasp that concept like that that concept is is kind of crazy to to even um imagine or, or fathom you know like you see that you see what you see on the surface and you see you have your first reaction of like how dare a human, you know what I'm saying, do this. Now, like, even if you go to the team one-on-one -on -one and say, like, I support BG. I think she made a mistake, um, but, you know, we all make mistakes, and she's done so much for me. I'm fighting for her, like, crazy behind scenes. You know, you could say all that, but that public support, that public look, it, it just looks much better. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's it.
that's all I have. Shout out to Chloe Jackson. Chloe Jackson also said something. I'll say it again, silent speech volumes. Uh, and then she tweeted that free BG in all caps. So salute to Chloe, salute to Queen for speaking up against their former coach. Like that takes courage. I mean, I, I think you have to salute that as well. Uh, and yeah, like, I think that's what I want to say. And then I guess I'll pull up the, the Nikki Collin. I'll pull up Nikki Collin before we get out of here. I'll let you guys off. I'm so sorry. Like tonight was a bit sloppy. <laughs> tonight was a bit sloppy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Forgive me. But I, I just had to make sure that I got this up tonight before, it, you know, it was too late because, you know, time and everything like that. I wanted to make sure we got some thoughts out there. All right, here we go. Here's Nikki Collin. She, oh, shout out to, um, let me shout out who it is. Shout out to my Lively uh, over there. And where is she? Uh, covering in Texas somewhere, covering Baylor and high school football. Nikki Collin answered for, for nearly five minutes. And salute to Nikki. Let me play the video. Let me stop talking. First situation kind of way on. Um, wow. You guys know, those who have been around me know I get pretty emotional. Um, I think BG, first of all, is, is human first, you know, and I think this is a human rights issue. Um, no one's saying she didn't make a mistake. Um, none of us are perfect, um, you know, but I guess I would want to know um, if I did something and was stuck in a foreign country and um, what it was, what it wasn't. You know, I think we all know that, that 10 years is a long time. Um, and, you know, I just, I see her as a, as a mother, as a sister, um, as a spouse, as a daughter, um, you know, as an unbelievable ambassador for the game of basketball. Um, you know, I think there are people that have said, like, she kneeled. We can argue about kneeling or not kneeling. Um, all day long. Brittany Griner's worn that USA across her chest and won, won gold medals for this company or for this uh, country. Um, she She's represented Baylor. Um, you know, I, I know, I, I want to say it was Bella told me, like, she was one of her first idols, like, a big part of, like, why, you know, she, she was she was Baylor, you know, and I absolutely know that there was a championship here before BG, but I mean, she, she made Baylor a household name, and, um, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't coach her, but I coached against her a lot. I game plan for her, um, and when you spend a summer in the bubble at IMG, you get to know everybody, um, and she was one of the first people to reach out to me when I got this job, and she was super excited about me getting the job, about coming, um, you know, us getting her back here. Um, the goal is to get her jersey retired and hanging in the in in the um, rafters. And so, I just I just think about what it would be like um, to be away from my family for over 200 days. Um, so that that's to me first and foremost. Like, I think this is a humanitarian thing. We can argue if we want about whether what she did is grounds for a trade for an arms dealer. Like, I, I'm not, you know, I think there's a lot of arguments in play. I think what isn't in play, um, in my mind, is that we shouldn't be doing everything in our power to get Brittany home. Would y'all honor her in any way this year? Or is there any plans in place to kind of put I think we're, we're talking about it. We were already talking about it last year. We've talked about um, doing it as a part of, um, you know, the new arena. Um, and, and do we, we just, basically it's been a big deal to do it right by her. Um, you know, I've been in contact with her agent since I got the job um, and know um, Kagawa Colas well. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I think um, BJ's family, like she's Baylor family. So to me, um, anything we can do to help her and her family is important. Thank you. you know, yeah. <laughs> I was say. Uh, but does that bother you? Like not not her remarks, but just when people kind of question her character over this. I mean, yes. Like, yeah, that? it does. Um, I think it's easy to question people you don't know. 
and you don't know their situation and we can't pretend to know if what was said in the court system was real or or just part of the court system like it's you know it, it's no different than people are told by lawyers over here to plead guilty because of certain things in the United States and the court system so um, it's not my job to judge quite frankly I don't see it as my job I think as a Christian it's to give grace um, it's to love um, to love one another and you know knowing BG like knowing her being around her she's a big kid um, to know her is to love her I mean honestly like if you she just is one of those people that radiates joy um, that would give you a high five or a hug um, so yeah I think this is about her being um, you know if it was if it was I, I think it's so easy to say when it's someone you don't know um, but would everyone be saying the same thing if it was their sister? Um, I, I think they might feel differently. Um, and that's not, that's not me saying that what she did was or wasn't wrong. Like, I'm not, that's, it's also not my job to comment on that, quite frankly. Man, salute to Nikki Collins. She handled that perfectly, I feel like. She handled that perfectly. And uh, and let me see. I mean, she handled it perfectly because, but like whether you agree with it or not, like, like she she humanized Brittany Griner. Uh, and she she still remained like neutral if you're speaking like. A political terms and, and all of these things like she said like is it worth trading like an arms dealer here <laughs> like you know what I'm saying um you know to get her home but like she needs to not be in a foreign country for 10 years for the alleged mistake that she made um and we don't know these things and it's not my job to judge uh but you know this is someone who is a nice person and, you know all these things everything she just said you heard what she said I think Nikki took it the right way and I don't think that hurt. Like, it's not that difficult to to say something like that, especially when she kept saying, she continuously said, you know, this is not, you know, you can argue about whether it was right or wrong what she did. Uh, we can argue about uh, trading her for an arms dealer. We can argue about A, we can argue about B, C. But like, at the end of the day, it's a human. And it's someone who's a large part of this culture and just a large part of this experience we call life. Um, I think Nikki Collins just put it perfectly. So salute to her. Take what you want with the with the other thing, with the Kim Wilkie thing. I guess you could put your thoughts in, in the comments. This is the World of 5K Subs. If you're new to the channel, my name is Rashad Milligan. I'm going to stop rambling for you all and get out of your hair. Until next time, please take care of your... So...